The emergency meeting of EU foreign ministers in Brussels had only one item on the agenda, the deadly violence in Ukraine. The ministers agreed to impose what they described as targeted sanctions, including asset freezes and visa bans against those responsible for human rights violations, violence and use of excessive force in Ukraine. They also agreed to suspend export licenses on equipment which they say might be used against protesters. When asked if the European Union is to blame for the violence after trade talks between Brussels and Kiev stalled, EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton dismissed it. Uh, 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 first of all, it was quite a long speech. And I, I've always thought it's ridiculous to try and equate things that are different and then try and make some kind of political sense out of it. So I would start by refuting your analysis. Lithuania's foreign minister, whose country is the current president of the UN Security Council, believes the EU is partly to blame for the Ukrainian crisis. I agree. We all are responsible, including EU, of course. So you you are responsible also? Also, yes, thank you. The EU has also come under fire from Russia, which accuses the 28-member bloc of meddling in Ukraine's internal affairs and worsening the conflict. Our aim is that the future of the Ukraine should be decided alone by Ukraine. The future of Ukraine is not in Moscow, not in Brussels, it's in Kiev. The EU sanctions against Ukraine are expected to be signed into law in the coming days. Despite the assertion from Russia that the EU is making matters worse in Ukraine by interfering, a delegation made up of three foreign ministers from the bloc and their officials has been holding separate talks with President Viktor Yanukovych and opposition leaders in Kiev. EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton says she is getting hourly updates from the three ministers regarding the latest situation on the ground in Kiev. Jerome Hughes, Press TV, Brussels.